Welcome to another exciting season two on video. Here's the point so you know it's real episode of Fried Rice Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Rice. Let's get fried. With me, as always, is Michael Chelios Larson. What now, now that I said it, how do you feel? I feel much better. Good. Now can we drop it? Now no. that I now that I acknowledge no, it. I told you when we could drop it. When do, oh, when I stopped trying to kill you is what he said. He pulled me aside, and he's like, yeah, I'll stop saying Chelios the moment you stop trying to kill me, and I'll never stop trying to kill him. Every time we're at work, and when there's a, like a, a pizza that just I know is going to give him a heart attack down the line, I'm always like, hey, Mike, you want to you want a slice, slice of, this, of this? And I'll just eat it right in front of him. You know, uh, or today we're doing our. Oh yeah, well we'll get into it. We'll get into the special, <laughs> special, uh, the the foodie episode of Fried Rice Podcast. With me, as always, is Brennan. Shipley up top, Austin. Hello, everybody. Oh my God, isn't that nice, ladies and gentlemen? We can hear Brennan. For fans of the of the show, if you've ever been, uh, if you've ever been listening. You know that Brendan is our quietest member. You know it from the fried rice, uh, the rice balls. You know it from from all of the episodes. This is great. Now you he's, can hear he's, more. He's Andy's uh, CIA handler. Yes, <laughs> I was gonna say now you can hear more than the, just the coughs. Yeah, just. And with us as always is Austin Drove from another state to be here today with two hundred dollars worth of beef jerky, <laughs> feral. Check me out at Toys R Us, and yeah, it's fucking great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I said, this is the foodie episode of Fried Rice Podcast, which will be nice because on video you can actually see what the food we're eating is. Last time we just munched on an audio podcast and we told you how delicious Clearman's spread was. So, Austin, why don't you tell us about... Well, okay, we got two contenders in the ring, and we're going to get into it once uh, the oven starts, uh, once it's at broil mode. But the two contenders are mine, which we've done on the show before. It's the world famous. It's the absolute probably one of the best tasting foods on planet earth and that is clearman's cheese spread today it will be put on a fresh sourdough slice of bread i think they need to understand your relationship with clearman <laughs> oh god okay if <laughs> i was hoping no one would bring up the message the chat thread that we were talking about but mike go ahead if you if you want to tell them how i feel about clearman's you can I have to find it first, but I will. Okay. And then on the other hand, in the red corner, weighing in at $200 worth of beef jerky, we have Austin. <laughs> okay, that's your cue to talk about your food. Uh, yeah, I've been eating it since I was a kid. What's uh, it called? It's, it's from a place called Gem Meats in Placentia, California. And uh, yeah, I've always been eating it. Every time I go to California, I go get some. Uh, I usually spend a lot of money on it because it's like thirty three ninety nine a pound, but that does not bother me. It could have been forty dollars a pound. I would I would still buy it. Fifty, fifty, yes, sixty. So, yes. No, I mean, where's your limit of how much it would cost per pound of meat? If it was a hundred bucks a pound, I'd still buy like half a pound. Wow. I don't care. Well, I can't wait to try this beef jerky. Uh, then I would try to use my hey, I've been eating here my whole like my life. I'd use my lifetime achievement award. <laughs> to try to you know get a better price but sure. i went in there this time and it turns out just three weeks ago they've only had one kind of beef jerky they didn't make a spicy or anything like that it was just the same thing uh for god maybe 40 years and uh, i go in there and i'm like where is the beef jerky i'm about to have a heart attack right now they moved it and there's also like eight other flavors so they Brand new line of beef jerky. Yeah. All and you bought every single one of them. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. And I haven't even tried them all. <laughs> I literally am going through the packs. Pull, pull some of these up. Just show how many yeah. packs we got. Uh, we got I, I pull, uh, Korean barbecue. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm going to read the prices, if you don't mind, just so that the people at home know know these, what this is costing. like a round half pound. So this is a about a half pound, $16. Whiskey barbecue. $20. Uh, sweet and spicy. Twenty dollars. Mango habanero. Ooh, twenty dollars. Uh, real Western. Real Western. Ooh, thirty-four dollars. Jesus Christ. 
Everything's bigger in Texas. This one is different. It's chicken buffalo wings. Yeah, I did want to try this one, and that's another thirty-four dollars. <laughs> uh, honey teriyaki. Oh God, I'm trying every single one of these fucking things. And if you let me, yeah, twenty dollars. Uh, you have the jalapeno garlic. I have jalapeno on that table garlic. I bought that specifically for me, and we'll all try that as well. And then, of course, the creme de la creme, which would be the classic OG beef jerky. Classic OG. That's what. Now that is what he specifically is submitting to the contest uh is going to be classic og versus clearman's i'm going to give these back to you uh okay andy i don't <laughs> tell him how I, much I, I love clearman's gonna... oh maybe not the first one okay yeah <laughs> basically <laughs> if you listen to the mac and me episode the same thing that he would do to mac and me he would do to a tub of this cheese <laughs> well that was his final yes his uh Maybe I won't read it now that I read it again. <laughs> Maybe it's not for public consumption. Well, no, now that you fucking said it, you got to fucking read it. Damn it. Go for it. Uh, it's hard to, get this, hard to get this into your voice. Uh, the Jews had to wander the desert aimlessly for 40 years. Don't the only re- thing they had to eat was manna from God himself. And this manna he named Clearman's Cheese Spread. <laughs> yeah. After I'm caught for all the atrocities I've committed, I'm going to ask for clearance for my death row final meal. True. And, of course, the the total, uh, if you came back with a girlfriend for me perfectly suited for my t- autism, it made me choose her, her or Clearman's. It's Clearman's every time. I choose Clearman's over love is what and I'm saying that one. I would fuck a tub of Clearman's. There I said it. But the jerky looks good. Yeah. I would, I would, if if it was consensual, if I could get the, if I could get consent from a tub of Clearman's, it'd be pound town all day long. Um, I don't think you want to fuck this beef jerky. No, it's it looks rough, like rough to, like I don't know what how, it'd just be taking two slabs of meat and. You definitely don't want to fuck that mango hob. No oh God, anything Ooh. spicy that would be. What are we talking about? What's what's happening right now? Are we having a really discussion good about food. fucking beef jerky? <laughs> it's good food. It's the battle of the foods. All right. Well, we talked about it, so let's try the beef jerky, and then well, we, we got to wait for the bread to be done. Yeah, we'll try these other ones until that bread's done. So uh, let's get. So what are we smoking then? Funny enough, not what Brendan brought, but then also kind of what Brendan brought. Uh, Brendan, what did you bring? But then what did I pack? And then what are we going to smoke later? So, uh, <coughs> the weed I brought today is called Snowballs, and it's basically a indica dominant hybrid uh, flower rolled in THCA, and so it's super potent. But the one that he packed was a nug from a different one that I put in the bag, hoping it would get coated in a little bit of the THCA, but it didn't quite work. Yeah, the last time I had this, I slept on the chair over there for like an hour after the podcast. It's not like an hour, Mike. You slept there until well into the evening. You slept there so long, I did my whole day's worth of activities around you sleeping. I ate, played video games, I watched a movie, and you just were on that chair, unmoving. You just woke up every maybe like two hours to check in. You didn't know where you were. You are comfortable with that. And then you went back to sleep. It was weird. And that was like earlier on. No, not earlier on. That was like right in the beginning of the podcast too. So, um, I don't know. Just thanks, Brennan. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> um, and then we're also smoking. I bought, I got some new weed. I have Hawaiian <laughs> Nights from Mojave Reserve. And I got a free Jars Cannabis Flower, which I'm liking a lot. And that is something gas truffle. You know, at some point. We're going to have to stop coming up with stupid names for weed. I'm going to say this right now. We're going to hit a limit where eventually things like your strains of weed are going to sound like usernames of just stupid, stupid things that no one's ever heard of. Right now, gas truffle sounds like something that that would be an awesome Xbox name. Like, oh, hey, gas truffle, let's go, right? I'm down for that. But, And I know that it's just a mix between fucking probably something called gas and something some truffle brand and that's it's all that's what they do but like can we just when you go buy beer for instance it's well i guess there's a yeah, shitload of different, different beers types. there's different beers it's not just beer if you buy beer that's called beer you're an alcoholic just, just say it <laughs> 
where's the beer beer just the one that labeled the box of beer i'd much rather them like you know evolve and instead of giving it a cool name have a cool phrase that goes with it like this is that shit that killed kennedy like oh <laughs> yeah like that here's that uh get you high like king <laughs> kong zapruder film weed <laughs> get you high like king kong yeah it's that uh yeah god i mean now I'm i'm blanking but there's got to be a million fun things to say. Mike, give us one. One. Oh, God. This is dirt fire. This weed will get you so paranoid you're staring out your window every five minutes. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. This, <laughs> this weed is going to make you regret every decision you've ever made. <laughs> this weed is going to make you think about your high school girlfriend. And what if we did get married? <laughs> this weed's going to this weed's gonna make you 37, 50 pounds overweight, starting a <laughs> podcast in your fucking house inviting your friends over just for some semblance of belonging just anything to make the pain go away the overwhelming crushing depression every single day you fat fuck that kind of weed sounds like the perfect strain yeah anyway. why, are you, why are you talking to me like that dude? <laughs> um what did i see last night someone uh, some video and it's uh it starts with um it's like hey you fat fuck you know at the at the like talking to us but as like some sort of uh, motivation, like talking to his audience, like you're, you know, you're like a fat piece of shit. And I'm like, oh God, that's a brutal way to start a. Thanks for the motivation. Yeah, that's why I never start a fried rice. Like, hey, all you fucking assholes, <laughs> you. Talking to you. There's the point. Um, it's a left hand point. So that's what we're smoking. We got Hawaiian dream, Hawaiian nights, whatever the fuck. I wish it was just. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? There's got to be like, I go to the store. And I know exactly what I'm buying every time. There's got to be, I wish they had a, a scale or some sort of system so you know that it's like a light green fluffy weed that's indica strong, right? Instead of having to ask every single time, it feels like too much of a, of a people can just bullshit you every step of the way with yeah, weed. You know, I and think I a lot like, of that came from it being illegal and then going to medical. And so when they went to medical, they had to do these bud tenders so that you know yeah but being a bud tender you're not you're not qual like there's no qualification to be a bud tender (laughs) well that's the point it's all an optical illusion there's a test that you take when my mom went and did that there was like guys leaving the building crying that they didn't pass the test failed the bud tender test wait okay now i would buy that you have to know the difference between indica sativa hybrid you have to know what strains are you have to know what terps are you have to know like, you need to be able to describe weed. I get that. And so maybe if you're too dumb to, like, you know, well, maybe not too dumb. Well, yeah, That's now like, that weed's legal, every dumbass is like, I'm going to sell weed for real. Like, they just love smoking weed. The guys that probably used to actually sell weed when it was illegal, probably the best bud tenders you'll ever meet. Oh, yeah. And if you don't believe that, watch High Hopes on HBO. It will tell you that anyone can sell weed. <laughs> sure, but let's not also, I, you know. Your mom's doing a great job, Austin, and we we appreciate all the things that she's done. So yeah, maybe sometimes I don't. Maybe sometimes bud tenders can be heroes. She passed the test. I know. Your mom's a hero. We love her. <laughs> uh, I will say though that yeah, I don't like that. It's I don't like that. I feel like I'm being lied to by everyone in the weed industry from yeah. top down. I feel like when I go to a when I go to a dispensary and the people there. They are all trying to sell me a product that until you use it, you don't know how good it is, right? It's not like you can read a review online to see that Hawaiian Nights is a good strain of weed because no one, there's no, I mean, maybe there's a website where people talk about it, but it was not this specific Mojave Reserve. That's in this specific area, you know, like people do, they can do reviews on products on weed maps. Weed maps. That's what yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Weed maps is great. Yeah. But I, I, once I find a brand I like, I stick to that brand and I try other stuff from them. Sure. You I know. Jeters. Jeters. Hands down. If we're going to go like a, a, a product that's rarely let me down, we're talking some of their glass cannons have been faulty a little bit. Yeah. But the baby Jeters, there hasn't been, I think a, a single baby Jeter in the, Hundreds of baby jeters I've smoked that have been has been faulty. These are like a perfect party joint. Like this is the, I think this is the creme de la creme. Well, yeah, there's going to be companies just like with beer we were talking yes. about earlier. Like Bud Light's a Bud Light. You don't get a bad can of Bud Light. It's just the same. Now 
They're all bad, but yeah, I'm saying say it's, it's all the same. It, they have well, quality say, control. Then this would be, yeah. But then you get, but even Mojave Reserve, which is a good company, and I've had good weed from them. Yeah. You can get bad weed from them. It just, and it comes in a bad, all I'm saying is that w- the weed industry right now, the way that it's set up makes the customer the, the victim of whatever that weed company is trying to push, whatever dispensaries are trying to push. They, that's why Cheryl over at Marvin's has those crazy ass deals because honestly, she can. She could just be like, sure, yeah, buy one, get two free of almost everything in the store. Like, buy one, get one for everything because the prices are made up and nothing matters. It's a game of whose line and they're just making all the fucking money they can. It's exactly like a car dealer. But it's not like alcohol, is what I'm saying. It's not like alcohol. You know what beer costs because beer has to be competitive with other beer companies. You know a Bud Light's not going to cost more than a Coors, and you know that like Modelo's going to cost the same as a fucking uh, Tecate or whatever, right? It's just they have to stay competitive. Vodka stay competitive. Now, when you get into hard alcohol, it's different because then it's just uh, then it's just then it's all quality marketing. differences in marketing. And by the way, if you're listening at home, here's just a tip: uh, Kirkland. From Kirkland Signature, the Costco brand, the guy that invented that, his name was Kirkland, and Grey Goose, the guy that the guy that made Grey Goose. I don't know if his last name was Grey Goose or if that's just the, the thing he did, but they together uh, made the formula for Grey Goose vodka under the condition that Kirkland can sell his vodka using the same process. Just don't tell people. It got out. So if you want Grey Goose quality vodka, go buy Kirkland Signature vodka at Costco for half the price and. And you you put it in a Grey Goose bottle, and even the the most snobbiest Grey Goose drinker would not be able to tell. And that's one of those hacks. Like even diamonds are the like right now, weed feels a little bit like diamonds to me. It's just like someone will tell me this is dank. It's going to get you high. It's really strong. I get home and it's too dense to pack bowls, or there's too much stems, or it just fucking doesn't light right, or whatever the fuck, and I hate it. And I'm stuck with it because I trusted some fucking guy at a counter and there was no way for me to verify. Now, there are dispensaries that have the glass case and you can even uh, the one in Bud's, the the one that has the smoke lounge out here, because uh, we have one that you can. I still haven't been there. Oh, no. They, it's yeah. the, the dispensary part in the in the front. All their weed are these like little jars that have a push, a little rubber push on the bottom and holes on top. So if you want to smell it pumps the smell into you into the air that's cool now i don't i can't smell so it almost feels like a slap in the face but that's fine i understand for you fucks that that might be a good thing well, I, but. I was gonna say i miss i miss the old days when they had the giant jars of weed and you'd go in there and you'd smell the different jars look at them they'd, they'd pull a nug out put it under a little magnifying glass yeah. and you'd be like okay that's what i want and they'd weigh out like four grams eight but they if can't they knew do that you, they'd give you a little extra because they were cool I miss those days. They can't do that anymore because now it's everything has to be pre Regulated, yeah. Everything's regulated. Because I worked for a dispensary in California as a delivery driver for a couple of years, and that was during the days where we packed everything. So we would have just jars and jars and jars of weed, and we would just pack it when someone placed an order, like order to go, like pack to order, and we would then run it out. And they would – that was amazing. And for – for me, it was probably the best time of my life weed wise because I was getting five dollar grams and I could and I literally packed them myself and they were I could just see all the nugs. I just picked the best nugs and made myself the best grams and it would buy a few every night, you know, just for fun, just to have yeah. weed on deck. It's the same thing we run into with edibles though. As an edible guy, mostly edibles, and I can buy one pack and it's great. Everything it's it's consistent across the ten they're ten milligrams, you can tell it. I'll take two. It's perfect. Another pack, I can eat five or six of them, and it doesn't do anything. Yeah, I feel the same way. I just, I just got a pack of uh, these gummies from some company, and I, I've been doing three, and feeling nothing. And typically, thirty is enough for me to at least go good. Edibles kicked in. Try know. this. Try Stizzy, the Stizzy brand. Edibles, pretty good. Oh yeah, strong they're, though. They're consistent. And they're strong. They're fast acting. They're usually they usually have a CBD or CBN in them, uh, so they're they're quick acting. I use them to go to sleep. That's one of the companies that like rose from the pile. There's always like a few of them that just because there's so many companies trying to make weed out there. There's so many dispensaries selling them. Like when I went to Oregon, me we were driving and my friend that lives there was like, see that building? Uh, 
that see that dispensary right there? Uh, it used to be abandoned, but before that, it was another dispensary. <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, I bought OGs this last week, and it's nowhere near. I, I need to find those little balls I had before. Those things were great. They were like little peanut butter balls. They were like five milligrams, but they were great. <laughs> so, those uh, Amy and Al's cookies were pretty solid. Those are solid. Amy and Al's yeah. were Amy pretty good. Amy and Al's is solid. I haven't seen them really anywhere. I don't know why I, I stopped. Is. George has them. I okay. tried those, and I, I played Death Stranding, and I didn't get scared. So <laughs> <laughs> it's good for me. Dude, that's one of the most. That game resonated with me. I didn't beat it, but it's too long. I'm, I got I lost. Think I'm halfway. I got lost in the soundtrack. There's a um, a band, and I can't believe I'm spacing on their name right now. But it even shows you in the game too. It's yeah, like, I, exactly by... what the what the name of is it. Um. Anyway, if you Google Death Stranding, uh, if you go to whatever your music thing is and put in the Death Stranding soundtrack, they're the ones that have the most songs on there. Something about that band is just hits different, you know. Like it just feels good. I like it a lot. Um, then that game. Speaking of spoilers, you finally got to episode one. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. As a rule, we're not going to spoil Fallout for no. the people at home who didn't sign up to get Fallout ruined. <laughs> but they've been threatening that if I didn't catch up on Fallout since two days ago, and I was halfway through episode one, if I didn't catch through Fallout, it's with- been out like a month now, Andy. Yeah, I know. I get to things a little late sometimes. We yeah. only spoil bad things here. The, em- the embar- embargo is down. We can talk about it. I read three books last week trying to catch up on that Wednesday Night Book Club no one's listening to. And, <laughs> and so I didn't have time. Let's not talk about the things everyone's watching. Let's only talk about things no one is watching. Yeah, The Nines with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. No one watched that this week. <laughs> or ever. To be, to be saw a spike in, in, in The Nines. I tried to join the 2B test tube. Um, under 30 only. Really good name, by the way. It is a good name, 2B test tube. Because um, I'm under 30. And I signed up, and I, I did the survey, and I told him, like, yeah, I got a podcast. This is all we use is 2B. And we, we, you know, I didn't ask him to sponsor us, but they haven't sent me another email, so I don't think they gave a shit. They listened to an, the first episode, probably. Yeah, we're going to... Our first episode is, is now going to be the beginning of season two very soon, if it hasn't shifted already. So the first episode is going to be a lot better than the first episode. First episode, final cut, right? Oh, no, no, no. It, oh, no, sorry. No, it's going to be season two. Oh, beginning first episode of season, of season two. two? That yeah. was Guns Akimbo. Or, or Die Hard. I was thinking maybe last episode of yeah, season say, one. Die Hard was well, season. except for the part in the episode where you say, It's the motherfucking season finale! Yep. And <laughs> you know what? No better way to 12 start. 12 people there agreed with you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to. So I'll, that's what we'll do then. We'll have the first episode be <laughs> season finale of season one. If you're curious to see what led up to that moment, go to our Patreon. But really, the quality sort of kicks in a little bit um, now, season three, which is again. <laughs> 15 episodes so you know do do what you're gonna do um so i guess we can talk about the movie then um or do you guys want to try this beef jerky oh yeah the oven's probably hot enough shit it didn't ding or we got headphones on fuck all right let me go all right the bread takes literally like three three minutes everyone wants a slice yeah clearman's yeah okay great are you gonna pause Oh, I guess no, we, I can yeah. distribute a piece of jerk. You're just going to go walk in there and throw it in really quick? Yeah, mm-hmm. I can pause it. Yeah, Let's, you know what? Hey, we're going to pause. Yes. We'll be right back. Not for the video, though. Those of you on video will get to, if you want to go watch the video, you'll be able to see what we do in between. This will be a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Watching Andy make Clearman's cheese. <laughs> you, can, you can take the camera in there while he makes the cheese. <laughs> it's too much to reposition it to get I mean, everyone I, in frame. Unless there's a, a good... Um, a good debate point. We, I can have you, you minions, talk about while I'm gone. I could just give them beef jerky fucking, and not let you have any. No, you guys are worthless. Yeah, so I'm going to pause this. <laughs> and just like that, it's like we never left. The power except, of editing. Except now we have. Well, it's not even editing. We just hit the pause button. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so now we've got our our snacks in front of us. Uh, first, while it's hot, we're all going to try. All right, so this first one is going to be, maybe we shouldn't start with Mango Hub. Wait, hold on. Wait, I said, while it's hot, we're going to start with Clearman's. 
Oh. <laughs> and you're like, no, maybe we shouldn't start with the mingle. You just got beef jerky on the brain. Austin. My contact <laughs> high is, yeah. is hitting. Sorry. All right, everybody, enjoy. And then this, oh, God, we should have paused. I'm going to pause while we all chew real quick. And we'll be right back. We've just been staring at Austin. We're all chewing. <laughs> Looking lovingly into his eyes. All right, 10 out of 10. Um, well, would you call this garlic bread, or is that just sourdough with cheese on it? This was sourdough bread that I bought independently of the Clearman's. This is a cheese bread. It just claims to be Clearman's cheese bread, is all it says. Could have been a little crispier. I know! Fuck! I, I was feeling anxious. If it had maybe one more minute in the oven, it would have been perfect. The bread wasn't right. It felt like soft bread. It should have been a lot crispier on top and still soft on the bottom. Now, if you went to Northwoods Inn, the restaurant that serves this, they would have given it to you perfect. And I did let us down right now. I even asked, should I put it back in? You guys just said it's fine. No, I had to mess with you right now. It wasn't necessarily uh, like awful or anything. Cool. Uh, I like sourdough bread, and the, the cheese tastes good on it. Do they serve it on bread bread at, at the restaurant? The bread, same? The steaks. Not rolls or whatever? They also put it on their potatoes, Oh, too. they do what I did. which I mm-hmm. See, I tried it. I had some so at home good. left over from last time, and I put it on steak. as the steak butter. Oh, that that's the way to go. And a baked potato, too. It's a game changer. Maybe maybe one day we'll we'll start the pod with baked potatoes going in the oven, yeah. and then yeah. at the very end the sign off, <laughs> you know, fucking drove four hours to be here, Austin Farrell. I take a bite and I'm like, it's fucking C minus. I don't know. <laughs> I I do make a really good twice baked potato horseradish potato. I was about to say the day that Andy's really trying to kill Mike, we'll do like a fried rice podcast barbecue. Oh yeah, and I'll make brisket again. Andy's Andy's been claiming this about these. <laughs> potatoes for five years now i've heard about these potatoes Never i keep hearing it. about these potatoes every christmas party i'm gonna make those twice baked potatoes and he shows up oh, with a God. bowl of mashed potatoes <laughs> i remember i got interested in the podcast and he's mentioned it at least three times in the first season and he tells the whole story he's like i'm gonna duplicate those and I, you know what i didn't get the right horseradish and but you know I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna I'm gonna I, make it. I still haven't gotten caviar. I still haven't pulled the that caviar. Trigger. That's what it was. The I still caviar. haven't pulled the trigger to get caviar for it yet. I will one day. Austere Christmas 2037. <laughs> we'll be Jesus. in season 30 by then. Tubi is now out of yeah. business and the podcast is in disarray. <laughs> Tubi we tried I- crackle. <laughs> Tubi, after taking a financial risk in 2024 on a failed podcast, podcast <laughs> loses everything. Um. All right, let's get to some jerky. All right, I'll start us off with uh, sweet and spicy. Brandon, did That's you call him Brandon? Brandon, no, oh, Brandon, okay. Brandon. It was a great podcast name. Mm. Just chew on my. <laughs> us eating. Uh, really fucking good to our any of our African listeners. We're sorry. That is very good. What's, All right. What does that mean? What the hell did that just forget mean? about it? Here, here's a Korean barbecue. Much more tender. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Once we get to the original, it's gonna blow your mind because even the guys who make this the original jerky can't outdo it. God, that Korean one is. Fuckers. Korean one's got like sesame seeds on Slap it. Slap so hard. Mm. This one is. I don't know what this is. God, it's very tender. This is whiskey so barbecue. Wait, I can't eat them this fast. I know, what are we doing? <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> eat the food. I'm getting through half a sample at a time. Oh my God, that Korean one. I'm still eating it. <laughs> but it's really good. So good. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Gem Meats Jerky. Where's this place? Placentia, California. On Yorba Linda Road. This whiskey, this whiskey one is going to take some work. That's a that's a tough jerky like that. Uh, yeah. uh. I mean, it's it's a look, brand new, fresh off the press. I'm not look. Some jerky needs to be hard. Are we ready to move Tastes on? Good. Yeah. All right, here's a little spicier one. This one is chicken buffalo wing. 
No, I've been ex- I've been excited for chicken buffalo wings. Chicken jerky. I don't know if it's chicken. I think it's just beef jerky flavored like chicken buffalo wing. Like they It's white them. though. It it mm. looks like it might be chicken. Mm-hmm. That is good. Maybe chicken jerky. That's that good. Impressed. I mean, it feels like it might be chicken. It, it's it chicken. Looks, it looks like chicken. Mm-hmm. Hold, hold why are you not holding up every single one to the camera? Come on, get on it. Hold them up. <laughs> this is the chicken. Before you bite into it next time. Here's a half-eaten chicken. Uh, <laughs> God, the chicken one's so good. Chicken's good, yeah. I've never had chicken before, chicken jerky. I'm just chewing. That's really I've never had chicken I'm so before. sorry, everybody. Here's honey teriyaki, I think. I got a little mixed up here on the board. Oh, oh, I know what you're doing. You know, I was giving, trying to give you the smaller Everything's one. been fantastic so far, though. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all really good. And it's a good variety. What was that one? That was honey teriyaki. That's the weakest so far. Really? It might be my favorite so far. And then right here, you don't have to eat it right away as I'm handing it to you. I'm just giving it to you. For, that's a real Western. Mm-hmm. Real Western? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's just maybe just maybe barbecue. Maybe just a variation of whiskey barbecue they couldn't choose. I don't know. So I, I tell Andy the only thing I can snack on is beef jerky. Oh wait, no, so that's keep saying. Well, I'm trying to give you the smaller one. The one, I, <laughs> the one I just gave you is jalapeno garlic. That's that's jalapeno garlic. What I gave you just now. Okay. This is the real western. Mm-hmm. Jalapeno garlic's good. I decided in the moment which one I want to give you. Did you get one of every flavor? Or is there yeah, more? there's one of every flavor. We haven't even gotten to the original left. There's, there's two left before the original. Oh, now we're wow. voting on just the original, though, right? Yes. Okay. This is just a, mm. a fun beef jerky taste test yeah, for all of you guys. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fair because this is a lot of Western is really fruit. good. Western's good? Mm-hmm. I haven't even tried them all yet. I was, I was saving it for this. This one... Is a mystery flavor. I forgot. I didn't write it down. I forgot which one it was. Mystery flavor. Or just misplaced label flavor. Was this Andy's, the habanero? Is it spicy? Is it really spicy? It's got kick. Yeah, that's the habanero. No, because I, I have that right here. Mm. So it's, it's got a kick. It's got to be either... Pepper? Jalapeno garlic or sweet and spicy or, yeah, my bad. <laughs> it's one of the better ones. It's good. It's got. Yeah, I think it's sweet and spicy. It's sticky, mm-hmm. like it's like honey and. It's good. My hand's getting a little mango sticky. hob. Spoiling everyone's dinner. <laughs> Ten minutes of us eating jerky. Check out Wednesday Night Book Club, and coming soon is High Scores. Oh, God, Mango Habanero is fire. That's good. I feel like the one before the Mango Habanero had more of a kick than the Mango Habanero. Mango Habanero comes later, the mm-hmm. kick. Okay. Sure. Kind of like our sauce at work does, mm-hmm. the same way. Mm-hmm. Habanero gets you after. Best one so far, Korean barbecue, mm-hmm. followed by either the chicken or that mango habanero. Yeah, that last one gets a kick after. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then there's a good western one that I liked. That western one was good. And then cue the Halo soundtrack. Here is the original OG oh, Jimmy's is... beef jerky. All right, now this is what we're judging against Clearman's. The right. texture's rougher than I expected. I'm cleanse my palate. Oh. I'm going to cleanse it with some beer. Yeah, that mango's still kicking on me. The more you chew it, the more you savor it. It just gets juicier and saltier. I love it in every hole. Right? The more you the more you chew it, the saltier it gets. You're hundred percent. As you chew it more, it almost turns into like that jerky chew. 
that they used to have. Mm -hmm. Oh, jerky. remember that stuff? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted some. That and Big dipped. League Chew. And Big League Chew. Yeah. My dad dipped Kodiak, and then I saw like a beef jerky one, and the guy's like, you okay, uh, can of fake dip, here you go, $2. <laughs> That's what that reminds me That's good. See how we all got dead air? That was really, that was the banger at the end. All right, so, I mean, I think these are two 10 out of 10 products. Mm -hmm. I think Clearman's on a sourdough bread with a dinner on its own as an appetizer, phenomenal. You have to pick a winner. But this beef jerky, on the other hand, if I had a bag of that at work, and I could just roll around, just toss it in my mouth on a 10-minute ride and just chew to some salty, my heart's content. I mean, that's really good. But I will say this. Of all the jerkies, the original's not my favorite. I think the Korean barbecue one yeah. is maybe some of the best jerky I've ever had in my life. Like that. So tender. I'm going to maybe ask yeah. for another slice before I leave. Right. One more, and I'll give you some. Before you leave your I'm own gonna house. Trade, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to trade some of my garlic one for Korean barbecue. If you Fair want enough. Me. Fair enough. We can do a little bit of swapsies. I have a scale. Um, a scale? <laughs> I don't think it has to get to that level. I've used this since high school. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Wow. So we'll leave the voting up to Brendan and Michael because you and I brought the food. And I think it's pretty obvious we, which one we will we'll vote for. So, I am going to give you good props for the Clearman's cheese. I got my own tub, so I'm going to go home and try my own little experiments. If you go a little bit longer than I did, like you put your oven on broil, you put the your tray all the way to the top, if that's how your oven works. That's how my oven works. Some people's broil's on the bottom, but like you find the broil function, how your oven does broiling, and then you put the cheese spread on top, you put the thing on in there, and it only takes a couple minutes. Does it make a good dip? No, not really. Practically it, it only like, for melting on things. It feels yeah. like butter when you're when you're um you wouldn't. It's like you wouldn't want to stick a chip into butter. Really, I was say it'd be interesting to maybe try lobster or crab with it. That would be kind of yeah. Like if you had a hot lobster and you just butter basted it or cooked it in it. Oh. Yeah, You're not no. talking about after. I thought like I after no. I was talking, give me or some and lobster and I, and I can just slap some on top <laughs> no, and melt in. That's not it. It's what I did last two weeks ago. I had like a little bit of a tub left. I had a steak, one of those little round steaks. I can't it called. I know it. But filet? A filet and a little bag of shrimp. No, talking to Mike. And I basted the whole thing and I put it all, cooked the shrimp and the, with the, cooked the steak, put the shrimp back in the pan little bit of olive oil and like a tablespoon of clearman's and kind of just mixed it all oh my goodness it was good I can and see. you and you said you had a heart attack <laughs> yes that's i don't believe my you. diet <laughs> i could see you putting this on like some bagel bites that's insulting or some toasty no like a it's so finite you don't want to waste any of it experimenting i could see that but i think it would be worth trying like you know what? No, fuck it. I, you're bakeable, absolutely right. Bakeable snacks. Except for my brain went right to bagel bites, went to the pizza bagel bites. Yeah, that's <laughs> and I thought, right. that does not sound good at all. What about <laughs> dino, <laughs> dino nuggets? Cheesy dino nuggets? You said bagel bites. Did you not mean the pizza bagel I meant bites? the pizza ones. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Oh, I don't think that would No, be actually, good. no. Now, once he said it, I was like, <laughs> no, that's not even a bad idea. I would, I would, like, halfway through the cooking process of the bagel bites, toss a little bit of it. On maybe a couple. Or get a butter knife, sc scrape their cheese off, be like, fuck your cheese, and then just make little Clearman's bagel bites. You, yeah. With little bits of beef jerky in it. I but don't know. I think Austin got a contact high. <laughs> so, because I think you could just <laughs> yeah, buy <I'm> bagels. <laughs> you could just buy bagels. Yeah, you can even <laughs> you can even buy little bagels. <laughs> they have those. I was trying to think of an already good bakeable snack food. I'm sorry. The next one was Dino Nuggets. It's called a toaster. I've been playing a lot of Ark. <laughs> Dino you're Nuggets. Just, you're just tr <laughs> trying to take all this frozen crap he's, and just throw. He's things. playing so much Ark that he just sees everything as an opportunity to like build something new. He's like looking around the apartment. He just sees all right. I see some pop figurines over there. If I play my cards right i could probably build the deck of a, a new house to start a new base on you're not you're not you're, you're not far off yeah uh but yeah okay so let's start with mike beef jerky wins moving on um yeah beef jerky i have to go with beef jerky because first of all why 
Well, first of all, because I can eat it <laughs> is the first reason. Take that out of the equation. We, shaved, the we equation. shaved a couple years off his no, life. No, seriously, that I, I get, uh, I, I, really, they're pretty equal as far as flavoring and all that. Uh, they're all they're both great. I would say I would choose beef jerky because you get a longer, I, it's just, you get, with beef jerky, it's like you get longer to enjoy it. When I eat the bread, it's gone. The beef jerky is still there. I can still taste the beef jerky several minutes after we ate it. Right now, I still have that salty flavor in my mouth. I I get that because it's it is a pain in the ass to make Clearman's bread. It's not an easy. Well, it's not. It's easy. It's just not instant. Instant. Oh, are you prematurely fucking <laughs> ejaculating over there, you son of a bitch! All right, Brennan. <laughs> Think about all the pleasant memories you rise to work with, with Clearman's. <laughs> all those moments your children try Clearman's for the first time. Your little boy, remember? He's like, "Daddy, what is this?" And you're like, "Well, that's Clearman's." And Uncle Andy brought it from last time. He he's was using it the memories of his children against me. <laughs> They've also tried jerky, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn uh, it! <laughs> but I mean, so. Clearman's has a nostalgia factor for sure. Growing up, going to Northwood Inn was a special treat, rarely because it was so expensive, and the bread was what you always remember. But the jerky was amazing, and that is, I don't have to heat up my house in the middle of summer to eat the jerky, so I'm sorry. The jerky wins. Point at the camera and say jerky wins. (laughs) Fuck, jerky wins. Hey. I feel like an asshole. <laughs> hey, it was really good Clearman's But cheese. the Clearman's is great. I bought my own tub of it. So I guess I guess uh his jerky's a ten. And both and, tens. and 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 Clearman's is a nine. No, it's still a ten. They're it's both just a the movie yeah. we're watching today <laughs> is, is three. called The Nines. And that was the perfect segue, and you guys, I don't know why you argued with me on that one, but um it is a ten. You're absolutely right. Okay, so we watched a 2007 movie called The Nines, um, and it is a, it's a thinker. It's, it's a mo- something. It's, it's a, something. It's a movie. So, basic premise: Ryan Reynolds is three different characters. He's a he's an actor who's going through some shit, burns down his house, and is on house arrest in some other person's home. He is a writer of a t of a tv series trying to get off the ground uh who's best friends with melissa mccarthy and he tries to get her to star in it and he's also a husband to melissa mccarthy and he has a daughter in the third part yeah. and in the first part he, the actor guy melissa mccarthy is a uh publicist for him there's also a blonde woman who is in when he's a failed actor she is a romantic interest slash just hook up hope davis hope davis the actress and thank you and then um in the reality tv show part she is an agent that uh helps him or doesn't help him uh get his pilot off the ground and then the third part she is a hippie lady that he meets in the woods which i think that's enough for right now um (laughs) so this is a this is an interesting movie that has, if you've seen the number 23, Which I did feel... it way better, though. What's better? The number 23. The number 23 is way better. Came out the same year, too. Did it really? Did it really? Yeah. So the number 23, if you've seen it, Nick Cage trying. No, no. not Jim Nick Cage. Carrey. Oh, yeah, Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey. Which yeah. one? I was thinking of. Um, Knowing. Knowing, sorry. Which, is, uh, which when I saw that in this movie, I kept going, why didn't yeah. they name this movie Knowing? And then I thought, oh, yeah. now I know why. And that probably came out <laughs> the same year, too. Uh <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah. Jim Carrey is is an author who sees the number twenty three everywhere. It leads him to find a book, and then well, we don't no need to go spoil that movie for everybody. But in this one, he is in each of these worlds. He's told to follow the nines, and as a viewer, you don't know what this means at all. Like as you're watching, you don't know what the nines mean. But he starts seeing it more and more. One iteration of him goes crazy, circling a bunch of nines and just fucking obsessing over it. I guess the substance of what he's going through in each of these worlds isn't that important in the long run because they till you tie them together, right? Till you when you tie everything at the end, 
really they're these are just fantasies that he's kind of living out um but anyway in the first one uh i didn't even take much notes on this because i was just i was just enjoying the vibe of it so much my so. first note was that's plenty of lighter fluid why are you still doing that yeah <laughs> oh i love the line uh when, so he it opens with him using a ton of lighter fluid it's too much burns down his entire house uh to burn his ex-girlfriend's clothing and then he goes on a bender, and he goes, is this crack? Oh, he goes to buy, hey, do you sell crack? And the guy gives him, sells him some crack, and then he finds a prostitute walking around. It was around. funny how they went non-stereotypical with the crack dealers. They went to two white college kid-looking guys for crack dealers, and then to go smoke it with. Yeah, he finds a, well, he finds a, a prostitute lady, and he goes. Very stereotypical. And he, and he's he's like, hey, is this crack? Do you know how to smoke this? And, and then it cuts them in the bedroom just jumping around the look she time. gives when he goes do you know how to smoke this was great though she's like <laughs> yeah melissa mccarthy right off of the beginning of this movie already is doing such a good job acting this is like a tour de force of her acting i feel like she hits it on so many different levels because if you think about every character she technically played in this one of them was an actress who had to play another role in it and then have that role become an actual serious role that she was playing she, and it insane. was her they didn't even change her name it oh. was melissa mccarthy it was her well it, well, it was melissa mccarthy second. in the second iteration right and she really was from the groundlings uh in fact that whole oh, sorry that whole second part um of the reality TV show, I read that it was um, it was improvised, a lot of it, and they just kind of let the actors do their things. So when he meets the uh, actress chick, who's not Melissa McCarthy, and they sit down at lunch, she goes, you and I have the same birthday, November 21st. That's her birthday. It's not his, but he just improvised, went along with it. But it's kind of interesting, uh, some of the choices they made. Okay, so the first part is him as an actor. He goes, and he's now under house arrest. And Melissa McCarthy is a publicist who's helping keep his record um, from being tarnished too badly from this. And he's under house arrest. He cannot leave the home. And it kind of feels like she's gaslighting him. A little, especially like when she says she'll break his ankles. When he's, it's yeah, like she a does copy of that scene for Misery. Yeah. 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 Which, now that you think about it, is that just him? So maybe in that universe, Misery doesn't exist and he who made the universe in which we know misery exists in a different iteration. He's just using that in a different yeah, point. You're jumping now. way ahead of yourself for those who haven't seen it. Though. Oh, <laughs> I, like, I thought that's what this movie made... was turning into. I thought that's what it was turning into was Melissa McCarthy was the chick from misery. And it was just going to be that kind of something. And then, Oh, we're going to, you know, we're going to do something different at the end. And Nope. Okay. Yeah, I get that. It, you don't know what's happening. She feels like she's gaslighting him. Then you meet the the love slash sex interest from the like the hot mom next door who they end up hooking up and then she also gets her own music montage. Oh yeah. Is that all there is? Yeah. We're like, is it my wife's like, is this a musical? No. Like, no, not funny. at all. Just that a random part. song in the middle of it. Right before right before I watched this movie, I watched another movie mm -hmm. with my dad, and it was called Silent Running. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. I've seen its brother Cool Runnings. Uh, probably was way cooler. Silent Running was just ridiculous, and there's three different parts where there's just a woman singing in it. There's just like music, and it's just awful. Like it was before Star Wars too, and it had that's like it inspired the droids from Star Wars and shit. And it's like a uh, it's rated G, but he kills three people in that movie. He murders one straight up, and then blows two other guys up with a nuke. Bambi's mom gets fucking murked in the first few minutes of Bambi. He's bleeding, like actual blood out of his leg, and he's dying. What is this called? Silent Running? Silent Running. Is it black and 1972. white? 1972. No, then it's color. Who does it star? Uh, okay, uh, Bruce Dern. The, the old, you know, Hateful Eight, the old guy in the chair? That guy. I just Young. Heard Mike. Mike doesn't have his mic to his mouth, but he just went, oh, when he heard Bruce Dern. <laughs> I, I mean, like Bruce Dern. It's, Bruce Dern. I wish it was on Tubi, because I would have selected that for the movie. How about a Kobe Benson? Ben, is that his name? Colby Benson or Kobe Benson? Oh, Not, from from Psych. He's the dad. He was okay. in other things. I yeah, I don't know. Anyways, oh. Beef Jerky's awesome. But I watched this movie, and then I watched The well, Nines just, right afterwards. And 
uh, I was like, I thought there wasn't a worse movie than with your Silent dad? Running. You saw this with your dad? Not, not, not the nines. I couldn't put him through that. He would just turn it off and be like, <laughs> let's, I'm not, I'm watching football now. Okay, fair enough. But I watched a bad movie and then an even worse movie after it. I was like, the nines will be better. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 we got to back up. You're, what football was he watching? Or golf, it's, whatever the okay, fuck. I, I don't know. Like, I was like, He what, would have. I didn't what say year he, did you watch this movie in? He's watching Austin said he would, but he didn't. I get it. I get what you're saying. And, like, uh, but wait, I get that you hate The music, the, mu- the you musical. Didn't like that? You didn't I did like not the musical? like the musical part. I like the part where my, he puts up. He puts up the only music part I like is where he puts a floppy disk in the piano and it starts playing. It's the that piano was, was bitching. That was labeled that was one knowing of my notes. actually. That was one but, of my notes. Yeah, <laughs> and the the worst part than sorry worst part than the than the music wise af, uh, piano was cool. The little montage is that all there is, and then I had to learn a new part of the Mockingbird song that I could have gone the rest of my life without knowing. <laughs> Which one was it? Like the cart and the bull goes down. You'll you didn't write this- it down. No, I'm gonna make you listen I to didn't the care whole for Mockingbird song now. It's probably sixty by verses. Eminem. Because I'll listen to that. <laughs> that was, a, that was my w- little baby. Don't say a word. <laughs> Daddy's gonna get you dead or whatever it is. I got the blue little baby. Yeah, and if that clear man's bread don't win, Andy's gonna kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting uh, uh, watching this movie. We're sitting there watching it, trying to figure it out. It's because this movie's a try and figure it out movie as you're watching it. But my wife, sometimes she just pops off with the funniest shit. She's just sitting there. We're watching it. It's kind of intense. It's not, it's not, I mean, there's funny moments in the movie, but we're sitting watching. She breaks into song and my wife's sitting there, sitting there about three bars in. She goes, Schmigadoon. <laughs> like just out of the it did have a bit of Schmigadoon vibes. If you're familiar with that musical show, I'll give you that. I'll give your wife that. That's good. Um, Pam's ex Roy. Is a major is kind of a major ish character in this, more major at the very end, but weird seeing him around. I like that um, each char- each actor played a completely different role in each of the uh, in all three yeah iterations. Some of the uh, like Crime Nine Labs is the name of the show that he the fictional show that he's on. Um, okay, so in the first one, yeah, he's in the house arrest, and then. Eventually, Hope Davis's character and Melissa McCarthy's characters, they're sort of fighting over, like, who's gaslighting him, who's doing what. And as an audience member, you don't know what's happening. And right when Melissa McCarthy sits him down, she says, well, here's the thing. You and I actually know each other. We've been friends for most of our lives. We talk on the phone every single day. She said, we've been friends since I've been 12. Yeah, and we've talked on the phone every day. day. This is going to come in. So... This movie is a sequel to an 11 minute short called God that came out in 1998 starring Melissa McCarthy in which she is on the phone with God. You never hear God's point of view. It's just Melissa McCarthy. It's sort of like a, a like a talking to the camera. You know, she's like me and God, you know, like we're, you know, we always just talk. He's got the best gossip and it's like her listening to God and then her husband's like trying to listen. She's like, I can't tell you, you know, whatever. Uh, and so eventually got, she goes out to a party and she gets drunk and she comes home late and there's 44 missed calls from God and she answers the phone and he's like, you know, yelling at her supposedly. And she's like, what? I'm drunk with real humans. I can see. And I don't have to, you know, the people, other people can see, you know, stuff like that. They break up. She has a very bad few days after all the like little things start just going wrong until eventually big things start going wrong like her car just ends up upside down and then eventually she starts talking to the devil and she's like oh really and she's like oh she's talking to the camera yeah it turns out you know the devil and i got a lot of you know a lot of things in common like he just wanted a little bit of you know privacy and respect from god and then he got sent to hell blah 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 eventually she discovers that uh she misses god and the moment she thinks that god calls her and they start apologizing to well she apologizes to him he doesn't acknowledge he did anything wrong, but that's God for you. And then that's the end of that short. It was funny. One of my favorite Melissa McCarthy things, honestly, the way she acted in that was fucking awesome. And so that little line that she says to him, where we've been friends since I was 12, we've talked on the phone every day, is it another iteration? Or technically that one, I guess. Or but... him in the car upside down in the movie also. Yeah, it could have been. 
that I know that now John August, the author, has a lot of upside down car stuff. We got to watch Big Fish and see if that one has it because he wrote Big Fish. I don't remember an upside down car in Big Fish, but I did like Big Fish. He also wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the one with Johnny Depp, not the Gene Wilder one. Yeah. No, no. So I don't know that if that brings him up in some people's opinion or down. That's a nostalgia question. I didn't care probably. for it. I'm not a big fan of the Willy Wonka one. Not, yeah, the second one's not as good. But, I mean, the new one's actually not bad. I kind of enjoy that new one. That's what people are saying. Yeah. I kind of liked the 30 minutes of bad entourage in part two. <laughs> and then it ends with Ryan Reynolds smacking a bitch. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was okay. And she just calls, you're not a man, walks away. I like oh. how they, he answers, the, he gets the voicemail, and it's just a guy saying, nine. Nine. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. I'm like, okay, Ramstein's haunting him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I when he uh, in the second one, it's so right when he sits down with Melissa McCarthy, she basically uh, is about to break down some things for him, and then it cuts to part two, the reality TV show, reality television, and that's when we're following Gavin, who's a playwright, and he's trying to, to do or not a playwright, a TV show guy, and he's trying to get his shit shit showrunner, showrunner, and he. Hires specifically Melissa McCarthy, the actress, Melissa McCarthy, from Groundlings. It even shows her and her real-life husband, uh, who she's really married to in real life, um, at Groundlings, hanging out. And he even turns to him, and he's like, oh, I'm so proud of her, you know, for getting a real role. He then gets pressured by the network to fire her and replace her with somebody else. That in, And then it all ends up blowing up in his face at the very end. And Hope Davis ends up, like, hiding from him, basically, you know, not trying to... For reasons, though, and that's what's crazy, is that the whole time you're just thinking, like, what's going? why is she a bitch in this one? And then you find out why, and it's to purposely drive him away from Melissa McCarthy. Her entire uh, job is to take him away from Melissa McCarthy. So in the first one, when he was going to be friends with her, she started sleeping with him. In the second one, when he hired her to be in his show... That would have put them in close proximity the whole time. She ends up getting him uh, by using this like fictional Roger guy or whatever. She ends up getting her shit can and breaking up their friendship. And then in the third one, she literally leads him away from the the car in which Melissa McCarthy's in and then drugs him. That's right. She's the wife in the third one. It's Melissa McCarthy's the wife. Yeah, because that's when he's married to Melissa McCarthy. And the reason that we get for all of this is... So I guess in the second one, the failed pilot, when he ends up finding Hope Davis, it does have one of the best scenes where Brian Reynolds legitimately just loses his shit, or the character, and he pun- he pops her in the face, just pops, like, <laughs> not an aggressive to knock her out, but just like just a fuck stuff. you, and yeah. he just hits her out of anger. Yeah. I even, That might have even been improvised. Yeah, I just started laughing. Like, like it was a pretty it. good pop. There was an Andy in that part, <laughs> Andy Fielder. What's that? He's the guy that was in the, the test group, and I'm like, there's Andy. There's Andy's character. <laughs> Every time there's an Andy in a movie, I got. Oh, okay. Because I was just, I thought you literally right now were just like, well, he popped a chick in the face. There, that's your Andy moment for the day. <laughs> no, like, that's I'm a, just out there. Uh, that's a Mike and just... Austin moment. Was yeah. that... <laughs> also, are the women the villain in this? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> uh, definitely yes. No, no. Neither one is a villain. It be, uh, so then, in the, it, so then, in the third act, we get to. Um, it's the show. It's the pilot for the show that he wrote, knowing. In which a mother and her and her and her husband and her daughter drive out to the forest and get stranded while he leaves, and then they're stuck behind, and the and the mute daughter says something to her. Right, it's a big like reveal, and it scares the shit out. So that's what happens in the pilot of the show. But then it's like we're treating this as if it's now like a real thing that's going on. Did the little girl bug you throughout the whole movie? It, it, we really wanted to know what she was saying. I wish they'd use some subtitles there because I don't know. I mean, I wish I knew what she was saying. I think because I know it. I think the whole point of it was to sell the when she actually says something, and I know that it undercuts it because we see that in the pilot when they're when they're shooting the pilot, we right. see the note of let's make her talk or whatever. Um, but in the actual moment, that would have been like it's if we didn't understand a word she was saying, but then she turned and said he's not coming back like that would be pretty powerful in a tv show i think without having to know so i don't think i i wasn't upset by the choice i didn't need to know what she was saying she was saying help where's dad you know it- well no i meant throughout all of it through the whole first two parts she didn't have it she had lots of dialogue but it wasn't dialogue it wasn't out loud 
She would talk to them. She didn't have a lot of dialogue. Not anything important. She was just sort more of, than forty lines. Okay, maybe I wasn't paying attention to that. I just any time I saw her, I was just like, you know, whatever this means, dead. <laughs> whatever. I don't know. I don't know sign language. Really but. unnecessary burn on Polly Shore in this movie. They're doing a. Uh, There's no the, such thing as an unnecessary burn on Ch- Polly Shore. They're all necessary. That that was that was. They could have at least saved it. Like, hey, he's not. They're playing. What was it? What, what game is that? Or, whose mother invented improv and is a who's a failed comic, a bad comedian, a bad mom comedian owns the comedy store. And no, like, they oh, didn't Polly say Shore. owns the comedy store. I think she's. They said like invented improv. I think it was like wrong or something. No, I don't know. Maybe it did. Like, oh, Polly Shore, story. and and like no, okay, all right, cool. Fuck Polly Shore. I guess <laughs> this movie just had a point to make. They, they well, would one person like, hey, he's not bad. Oh, whatever, you know, and just moved on. I mean, that I mean, could have been like the director or Melissa McCarthy had an issue with Polly Shore or something. Yeah, I mean, if you're at the, that in if you're at Groundlings Theater, you're right across. I mean, you're basically down the street or near the comedy store. So, and I'm guessing that was actually them having fun with Polly Shore. Or that, yeah. I hope. They're not. <laughs> you want me to hold the micro microphone up to you for that? No, but I thought we had a conversation last week that when Andy puts his mic down for a second, we don't all just shut the fuck up for a moment. We always put it down when it's you're about to talk. It's, it's your no, turn. No, we I all don't. said I, something. I put we something down when you guys are talking, and it, we all said something. It was like your turn, and so he grabs the ball, and lights yeah. it. <laughs> I, I learned a new term. I've heard of Skinamax. I've never heard of Spray Per View. Spray Per View was a good That's line. A good, yeah. I like that. Oh, my Spray. last my last three notes on this movie. He's a fucking sim? Melissa isn't helping. Part three? Fuck. Okay. <laughs> I'm not watching Extra Guy now. Uh, I'm only watching Deadpool if it's a Ryan Reynolds movie. <laughs> so, we get the reveal from Hope Davis's character. And she says, I've been trying to keep you from Melissa McCarthy because you love her too much. In every iteration, she's your favorite person. She's keeping you here. You are a nine. In the universe, there are one through, you know, ten. Uh, eight, and eights, are, and then he's like, sevens are humans, sixes are monkeys. He says, what's an eight? She says, koala bears, they're <laughs> telepathic. I thought that was a fun was line. Funny. Yeah, was and uh, he's a nine. Basically, a god. If there's a 10, they don't know about it. They just, you know, theoretically, there might be a 10, but they don't know. That, they don't even address that. But, but she, she was also a 9. She's a 9. I thought she was a, I thought she was a different no. number. No, she said she IX has a, instead of... No, it was interesting because hers wasn't a number. It was Roman numerals. So was his. Yeah, his yeah. was Roman. But no one else's was. I'm pretty sure if, if Roy and the prostitute chick had probably Roman numeral 9s on them too, we just didn't see them. But I think every 9 would be... You think the prostitute chick was a nine? Absolutely. At the very end, you see, you see, like Roy, like Roy's character and the prostitute chick were both there to help Hope Davis. She was the one doing the face to face contact, but Roy was always there setting up the like he set up the security system. He criticized the show or whatever. Like he was there for that. He also, um, well, he wasn't really the third one. He just popped in at the end to help. But it's it, so Ryan Reynolds being a nine means that he's god and he every universe of these three universes are just three separate iterations of him existing simultaneously maybe before and after for who knows how long see i did not get that they were separate oh so you think he's three different entities on the same earth existing at the same time well i don't I don't know that all three actually exist. No, I think all three exist. That's the whole point. He's he's God. He makes these un- it, like he literally makes these universes on a whim, and destroys and, them, and then destroys them when when he leaves. Yeah, so he, he said he did ninety at the end. Didn't he, he had ninety iterations before he got to the one that he was in then. So I don't think and it killed millions of people. I got all that. What I'm saying is that in this movie, these three, I don't think were separate because otherwise. If what you're saying is true, then Melissa, the last scene would not have happened. No, I, I think... Because it would have destroyed the universe. No, what happened was... When he left. He first, first universe, when he got... What he, the first universe, he steps outside of the... The line, home yes. Earth, so that universe is gone. Okay. Second universe, he gets pushed away from Melissa McCarthy. The entire um, project fails. And then when he yells at the camera... 
to leave him alone and and she goes what camera that's when that earth shatters in his mind next universe iteration is the third one and the third one is basically what he was already half creating in the pilot of knowing he jumps into that universe creates that and that's the one that finally is enough for hope davis to get him i think you said the key word to me and and what we're where we're differing on this is very simple shattering in his mind I think that's the key to it. Well, you don't think, think he's God? No, I do not think he's you God. You think he's a crazy person? No, I think he's a, I think he's you when you write a joke and then you decide you don't like it and you shatter it. It's gone. Okay, you have to talk into the mic. When you shatter <laughs> that, it's gone. When you write a joke, as a writer, you're creating a universe. Every time you write something sure. or create anything, you're creating that universe. When you decide it's done, it's done. Okay, but then what, if I was God, though. But you're not. You're the God of that universe. You're the God of whatever you that's create. That's the gods of he, that's all, that's all this is, is he is a. But I'm saying he's not a literal God, he's a writer. No, I don't think he's a, I don't think so. I think he's, I think he's a, they say it, he's an interplanetary, you see him fly off in the distance with his homies at the end. You're like, he's an interdimensional God-like being. That'll, that can at will create a because they even said that you don't have the human words or human thoughts to even understand what we are. I'm not saying that's not what he was writing. I'm not. I don't think this is writing. I think. Oh, okay. So, from your perspective, mm-hmm. it would be the second part is the real one. That's why it's reality TV. And when he ends up finishing this series, the main actor played by himself would be ceases to exist. Or, or he's told by a woman that he meets next door and has Hope Davis's actress play the part that he's told. So the last part then would just be a fictional thing that we're watching, an in-universe movie or TV show is what you're saying. The last one is, is the pilot of knowing. Right. He modeled the character after himself. He got, the, he got a, a dude that looks just like him to, that starred in Crime 9 Labs or whatever to star as the guy, the guy who just burned all of his girlfriend's shit, hires him to play the episode of Knowing with Melissa McCarthy, gets her back after all the fucking shit goes down, after he loses that other actress. That's a theory that I'll, that is strong-ish, but I, I like to take it at face value, where he's literally a, a, a ninth dimensional being right. who yeah, can yeah, create yeah. worlds, and this is the 90th iteration, and he's finally told that... Um, well, and he's finally pulled out of it because because and then what I love is that final little moment where he's with Melissa McCarthy and he puts his girl to bed and she knows he's about to leave. And they have a very frank conversation where he's like, yeah, this is, you know, you're, I don't know what's going to happen. Worst case scenario, everyone just ceases to exist. And it's painful. It's like a fiery void, you know, whatever, like hole. But then. I love that the end end is the iteration he leaves the earth with is the one we kind of live in right now. Right. We live in the one where Melissa McCarthy is a successful actress who's married to um, that guy. But the only thing that's different is that girl's not her daughter. So it's technically not our universe. So, but I like that it sort of went that direction. And I like that Melissa McCarthy got a happy ending. And I like that Ryan Reynolds went off with his homies to that place that we see in the very beginning where he's wrapping that, green thing around that warm white space and he's putting that green band around which allows him to kind of forget and be seamlessly in the earth and when he rips it off with his teeth which is the fucking poster of the movie the final kind of scene that you see of him is ripping that thing off which is crazy that they put that as the poster as the final scene of ryan reynolds anyway um i like the theory of being God and that all of you are just figments of my imagine my godlike imagination and that it, all of this will just cease to be when I move on to my next interplanetary adventure. But see, I think that's what I'm saying is that that's, if that was the reality of this movie, then it's a, it's a different movie than I feel like they were going for. I think they were going for making you realize that when you create something, you're in charge of it. I'm going to have to disagree with you. I think this was a science fiction movie 
disguised as a light psychological thriller with humor and a lot of what Not the too. fuck. And it ends up having, I think, a pretty satisfying conclusion. It's a little silly. It sort of reminds me of the end of um, Circle, I think it's called, on Netflix, uh, where, well, I won't, and you know, I've got to just stop ruining movies for people. But anyway, um, yeah, that's my, my takeaway is that uh, it's a cool, it was a cool science fiction vibe, cool ending. I liked it. Uh, I love this theory. Great acting all around. And when he learns that he's God, the aspect ratio gets really, 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 really tiny on his face and then snaps to the knowing, which I thought was cool. At one point, did you think it was going to be a video game creator with uh, who'd just gotten like high? <laughs> it was like, no. this is my world. I'll do what I want. Maybe. They kind of gave it that feeling at a couple of points. I don't know. They literally even, even shrunk down into a video game screen at one point. Yeah, I mean, they, I think he was trying to fuck with us the whole time. The director, the writer, John August, yeah. who did Big Fish, which is a great movie. Yeah. I'm, well, oh, yeah, go ahead. I was, I was going to say, I, I probably, I can sum it up <laughs> like this. Uh, you know, basically the movie says we're all our own gods making our own decisions. It's a lot like a first year philosophy class. Felt like a lot of it was stuff that uh, I learned in college in philosophy class that was, uh, it, it's high concept, but ultimately this movie's kind of pointless. It doesn't really take a point of view ever. It's just, say, it, it's literally saying the point of view is whatever you want it to be. You're the God, you're the creator, you created something. It's like a Rick and Morty episode. It's like nothing they did in that episode matters in the long term. But he went on an adventure. We're basically just watching a god go on vacation. And then at the end being told, it, that's been long enough. 4,000 years has been enough, bro. It's time to come back and be a ninth dimensional alien being. I don't know. Uh, it's just, it feels self-satisfying in the end. The, the movie, it, it's, it's, a, it's weird because it's one of those movies that was enjoyable to watch. I didn't like sit there and go, I hate this movie as I was going through it. Austin. But I got to the end and I went, why the hell did I watch this? What was the point? Uh, you know, I, it's just telling me to decide whatever I want to decide. That's what this movie does. It just goes through a whole movie with all this self-satisfying, great acting, some humorous stuff. But in the end, this movie's not about anything. Well, the director, the second part, the reality TV show, he based that on his failed tv show that he made called dc and so a lot of that was um him just kind of maybe like critiquing hollywood so like the second part was a critique i feel like the whole movie is a critique of hollywood uh an exploration of you know fate or maybe you know like what because i know they mentioned at one point that uh like you're i think you're trapped by fate i thought i some some person said something about fate and i was just like that's but that's not right because he's creating all of this but maybe his fate is to leave this place and that's always going to be his fate is because he can't stay there forever but i take it as face value at face value it's 100 percent just a god on vacation type of movie shenanigans you know just he but the shenanigans this god wants because i would imagine that any god who would want to live on earth would want to have the full range of emotions, the full spectrum. They'd want to feel heartbreak and laughter and pity and sadness and anger because otherwise you're not getting the full scope of the human experience. And so if you're going to be a god, yeah, I would imagine one is a breakup, one is a failure, one is a happy family man who gets separated with fear. But Well, except for once again, going back to the philosophy stuff, that kind of defines against the existence of God because it's... A God wouldn't need to feel those things. I don't know. I think a if, God would not feel by definition. I, when I play The Sims, uh, I don't, I mean, The Sims is pretty basic, but if they had a more complex version of The Sims and I saw my characters really becoming friends with each other, like, like maybe, the AI reality, this movie maybe could be, yeah. I, yeah, but maybe I would want to experience what they're experiencing. I think people play video games a lot to vicariously 
experience what the characters are, are experiencing. Like I'm playing. Yeah, but Kingdom people Hearts. aren't God. You are when you're playing a video game. I mean, no, you're still gonna have the different emotions and the different things that that by but, definition God does not have. Let me play. If Sim, God had play those, Sim well, City, your argument that that doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? Because, well, the God of the of you got to keep this at gods. Uh, that God, whatever God it is, has no problem with killing millions of people. For example, even in this movie, they talk about that. Oh, I've killed millions of people. I just they cease to exist. Whatever he doesn't care. Yeah. That's like, the point. So it's not like living the Bible by, God. You can't say no. It's also the God of this movie. Yeah, he says every time he creates, eliminates them. He doesn't care. It's not like it matters to him. No, he the opposite. He says he feels bad when those billions die. Like he he said he, he and he. But like, I no. do it again anyway. He says he's like, and you don't think that I? And he's like, and you don't think that I know that they're hurting, that they feel the pain, or that like I? And you don't think that I feel that? Like I do. But he's a God, of course it doesn't matter on the grand scheme of things if you create if i popped all of you into existence and then i but i'm an interdimensional infinite being that's going to exist for time that you guys can't even understand the concept of as humans and my point is if that's your emotional level then you don't care about having a wife that's that's so minor in that scale no because Having the experience of having a wife would mean nothing. It's like creating a video game and not playing it. It's like creating a. a it's like this dude creates his own video. You mean game. like those AFK games? No, t- no. I'm talking about like this guy creates a universe, a fully lived in, breathing universe, a world full of life that he created on a whim, and he allowed himself to be surprised by life, and he allowed himself to feel the range of human emotions that he created the concept of human emotions. So, like, that's, I mean, that's why create it in the first place if you're not going to enjoy it. It's like why, so if you're a god. The same reason you don't feel anything when you step on an ant. I feel, I mean, I don't. Right, exactly. But. The wife would be the wait, ant what are we in this arguing? scenario. No. The wife in this scenario is the ant. That's no, my point. Here's the here's the point. If I could transform myself into an ant, and knowing I was an ant, if, and, and I could just allow myself to ant it up for a little bit, then I would want to, just like all the other ants, go do some worker ant shit, meet the queen, dig some holes, right? I would want the full ant experience because that's I... That's what makes you not a god. That's my point. No, that's the opposite of it. If, I, if he created an ant farm of humans and he wants to pretend to be an ant, but once he leaves, it doesn't matter because, like, who cares about the ants when you're gone? Like, he doesn't care about the humans because he is an interdimensional being that is going to create more iterations of Earth if he wants to. That's the whole... But you're defining what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. What are we arguing, then? Okay. You're saying that he wants to feel the experiences of... with the Like, he loves Melissa McCarthy too much in this movie. He says it to her. Okay. If she's an ant, he wouldn't. That's the point. Once she's gone, she's gone. Fuck it. Who cares? Like you just said about the ants. To a god, Melissa McCarthy would be an ant. Every iteration he made, he's made her a primary fun- part of her life, of his life. So he's he's made 90 iterations. I bet in every single one of them, there's been Melissa McCarthy, or at least some of them have been Melissa McCarthy, and he's made it a... But to do that, you have to, in your own mind, take the leap that this god is creating every individual person on earth to what? fit his needs. He's, I mean, I would, if I'm imagine if you can create, if you can create the earth, and humans, then I don't see why they why, why the net why the limit of power wouldn't extend to like if I could create Earth and all the mountains and all the seas and all the every animal right boom in an instant why would it be any more difficult to then individually create eight billion people in an instant because if you have that much power you have that much power it seems like it's a pretty infinite amount of godlike power so like I don't see him I think he very much could make a specific earth in the blink of an eye 90 iterations in he's not perfect it's not claiming he's infallible he makes mistakes but he wants melissa mccarthy and all of them or at least the last four or the last three or four because he loves her and he's just he's she's his favorite and four because of the god short so i don't know i uh but i do i, I think yeah he's just trying to it, experience life the life that he created he wants to experience it did you get that out of this movie i'm all i'm thinking is maybe i need to stop watching the movie the night before the podcast (laughs) because i'm like 
it's four o'clock in the morning. I'm starting the movie, and I'm like, shit, I'm not gonna sleep. Ugh. Like I ended up renting it on Prime because I was like, I don't want to add another forty five minutes of ads, <laughs> like, which Tubi does not do. Tubi, Tubi does. So yeah, I love it. I love Tubi, but they're yeah. pretty good about ads. I will they give are. them that. They're pretty good. It's, I think there were the like morning, four or five minutes of ads in the whole want, movie. I don't want no ads. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got time for that. Unless if it's a good movie, then it's like okay, I, I could keep myself up for it. I mean. It had its interesting moments. Um, it mostly had me thinking he was either hallucinating people. It was either a drug psychosis or a stress-induced psychosis in part two. And, like, that's kind of where my mind was going. And then, yeah, it took that turn where he's now God. And I was just like, okay, that's interesting. But, I mean, I don't know. It, Yeah. It, I, not my favorite. Uh, I Austin? Just, I just kept thinking of better ways they could have done the movie, like better situations. Like it could have been about, you know, he could have still, it could have still done everything, but it could have been, he's a writer and he's like entering these stories as himself. Uh, it could have been maybe he's a video game designer and this is a game that he made and he's addicted to. It could have been the the same exact plot of the movie, except that, there's there was some kind of risk that he needed to take in order to like save Melissa McCarthy or they're they're telling him like you can't actually do this and he's like I'm gonna prove him wrong and then finds a way to yeah the make- God stuff was actually distracting in the end it didn't it could have been a better movie it feels like without the God stuff had they made him just a writer had they made it more clear good acting yeah good acting and good and and humor was well done in this movie there was they some did funny some parts. good funny you know. Humorous parts. It was definitely a Ryan Reynolds and Melissa McCarthy vehicle in those ways. Um, they did great, but um, with what they were given to work with. But I think I think uh, it's kind of the writer's basic direction. I have a problem with them. Ryan Reynolds in the second part reality TV show really did a great job acting. He really felt like a stressed out writer. Like I liked him a lot in that. It was hilarious though. Speaking of Ryan Reynolds, my wife at the beginning of this movie. Because they took every opportunity in the first part of this movie to show Ryan Reynolds shirtless. Fuck yeah. <laughs> they took every opportunity. Not Wasn't this that, around showering in jeans? You don't care that he's showering in jeans? Look yeah. at that body. <laughs> this was post-crack prostitute hangout. Yes. I would. I mean, that's like, if you're, in a, if you're in a shitty hotel room, you're not taking your fucking shoes off. That's just, yeah, it'll dry. It'll dry. <laughs> just keep your fucking jeans on. Which we learned in the uh, Die Hard episode. Just take, you know, take your shoes off in the hotel room. <laughs> Let your feet. Feel the carpet. Yeah. So stupid. Um, all right. So obviously we're a little bit mixed on this. Rotten Tomatoes, I think it's got about a 65. So it is one of those things where I think a lot of people, if you, I'll say this, it, the twist ending isn't for everybody. It seems like it puts you guys off mm-hmm. by having the whole it being him God thing. I liked it personally. I thought it was a fun bring, like a fun pulling all together. But I will. I will say that, yeah, if they had gone the, the different route and made him just a, a writer losing his mind or this is a video game or this is a show or whatever. Or like I, Wilfred where he, he finds out he overdosed in the end. Yeah. I Sure. Yeah, I, they could have gone back to the beginning when he was... When he burned out his house. Out, yeah. Maybe it was like right before he dies or whatever. Yeah. I think it would have been equally as good of a movie in my opinion. So I don't think the, I don't think the twist ending ruined it. I feel like if you were to, if we had the alternate one that we're thinking, I think it might have been well better received, at least by you guys. So it's a bummer that they went with the one they went with. Then in, in this case, uh, I'm ready to rate it. If you guys are, yeah, um, I like it a lot. I'll give it a B minus because I think the acting is phenomenal. I wasn't bored once. I like I liked all of it. I like I liked the movie. I thought it was strong. And it does keep you guessing the whole time. And it doesn't put you on the crazy number 23 uh sort of vibe, which is No, it's okay. lighter than that. It's, yeah, it's lighter light. than that because the number 23 one, you can leave that starting to think, "Holy shit, the number 23 really is everywhere. Am <laughs> yeah. I fucking insane?" And I like that. That's yeah. what makes that movie a lot of fun for me. Um and Jim Carrey's great, but yeah, this this is a lighter version of, of the number 23. I did like that scene when he was like, you're looking for nines. Like, you see them everywhere. And she's like, where are you looking? And he's like, the classifieds yeah. or whatever. And he's like, well, yeah, the prices of everything. <laughs> 1999. Yeah, yeah, there's nines and everything. 
<laughs> yeah, so it was a, really a gaslighting, but like, who's gaslighting who? Is he going crazy? Is she fucking with him? It's a lot to think a lot about. Of that, a lot of that feel throughout this movie. Uh, yeah, that's why I liked it. I, you know, as far as rating it, well, it's a tough movie to rate because I enjoyed the first two thirds of the movie. And then the uh, end of this movie became uh, just kind of just out there. Like, it's it's almost too much to think about because it's not set up like a traditional, even traditional God like like we're talking about. It's not really set up that way because this would be a very fallible God were it God. Okay. Because God's supposed to be infallible. But by definition, throughout well, this movie, they're saying how fallible he is. No, but I mean, we're going. You're, you're saying Hope Christ, Davis is Christian yeah. God. Yeah, is Christian considered, God, well, according to the Bible, to be infallible. Right, exactly. But even if you go to Greek or um, if you go to those types of gods, like the ones where it's multi gods, when we go into polytheist, polytheistic kind of right, but like those religions, gods aren't capable of creating universes. Well, at, as a team, in this movie, they're talking about the Christian God, not those gods. No, in this movie, they never bring up the Christian God. They they say that he's a nine and there's multiple other gods so he's not sure. even the only god there's right. literally another god helping him out with two other gods helping her out so like it's not he's not god he's you not think Christian. they're all creating their own worlds no i think they jumped into his world because they can do that because they're gods they're like hey you've been doing this for forty thousand years this is your 90th iteration of fucking earth you're trying chill. <laughs> like or, or not even chill i guess it's like you know what it could have been Honestly, maybe in maybe iterations ago, iteration one, he was sort of a Christian type God where it was more overseer. Watch what happens. But the more iterations and the further he invested and the closer he got to humanity. And then he finds Melissa McCarthy and falls in love with her as a human and just her personality and her soul. That's when the other beings realize it's gone too far. Now so it's, it's like, an intervention. It is. That's what it felt like yeah. at the end to me. It felt like, yeah, quit fucking with your simulation. Just let it run. Or I don't even think they care that's about the simulation. That's what I thought. See, that's how I felt yeah. about it. I don't, but I don't think they care about the simulation. I think they're sympathetic to whatever humans are, these sevens, to whatever degree they can be sympathetic as gods. It's like, if I, you're right about ants, right? Mm -hmm. If I see, if I step on an ant, I feel nothing. If I see a kid pour acid down an anthill, I feel terrible for those ants because they don't deserve to be horrifically killed, right? So, but at the same time, I move on with my day because they're just ants, okay? But maybe that God, that kid in the situation, that's who I would be more concerned with. So, like, you see Ryan Reynolds' God in this, and he's now too invested in his project, and he's, he's starting to lose himself in it. He's starting to be depressed. And he's starting to feel sad. Now all these different iterations are going on. And it's getting sadder and sadder, right? And Melissa McCarthy is the only reason he's sticking around is because he just wants to be around her. So then when this chick comes in, she has to be bad to him, which sucks because she was, a, she was mean to him to save him, really, and save him from the point of view of another god saving another god, right? So, like, it, I don't know. That's okay. So continue. Sorry, so, you didn't get anyway, a grade. They basically, uh, so the movie basically the end ruined it for me. I was enjoying the movie, trying to figure it out, but then when they told me what they wanted me to think, it became almost offensive. Oh man, um, that's uh, what got me really thinking. Yeah, it was that last little bit that was like for yeah. me the final little clinch that got me going. Like mm -hmm. I'm invested. Like I like now I can start thinking about this in a whole new light. This entire movie. Yeah, but, the complete opposite for me. It's interesting. Okay. Um, which is, but I think that's good about a movie. That's actually a good thing about a movie is that it does make you think. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that I like, I just didn't happen to like the way they did this one at the end. But, uh, as far as making you think it's one of the things I like about a movie. So I'll give it like a C minus for making me think. But as far as like, had I paid for it, I wouldn't be very happy. B minus C minus Brennan. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely did make me think, but it did, it made me think the guy was going crazy most of the time. And then when it made that change, I was kind of like, okay, that's, it makes sense. But yeah, I, I, I don't think I could recommend this movie to anybody to watch. Just, ouch. yeah, I don't know. I didn't enjoy it enough 
to have a rewatch or to tell somebody else to watch it. So I'm going to give it a D. Okay. And by the way, we never, ever, ever, I forgot we're doing video. Uh, I've just been munching. Don't forget the point. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, uh, but we, um, never talk about our grading system. We didn't even do it on the first episode no. and I've been meaning to change it. We eliminated a, and we added a W. So after F, we have an even lower grade, and that's a W for waste of time. And B is as good as it gets, B+. plus, Unless it's Battlefield Earth. That gets an M for Masterpiece. So <laughs> that's the best movie ever made. Join Scientology today. Go to Scientology.org, which I put in our description. I saw that. <laughs> I, not, I was just like, yeah. I, was just, I don't even know what to do. I didn't, at it's, us, bro. it's like I read that, and I was like, okay. Yeah, I can't wait. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we fuck around and find out. Is it an actual link? Yeah, to the fucking Scientology (laughs) website. Yeah, Go join. Watch Battlefield Earth, the greatest workplace comedy of all time, and then (laughs) go join the religion that made it possible. What's not to love? Pride Rise Podcast presents. um, All right, so you gave it a D? A D. Oh, man. With all the uh, different, like, iterations, way they could have done it, I'd the acting was good. Uh, they they had something. They just did it all wrong. I didn't like the cinematography. It seemed just so chopped together, like Ed just thrown together. Uh, there's so many different ways they could have gone about it, and they just didn't. And just like I, I understand like psychological thrillers, but like it was just way, way, way too much confusion. And like it start, it had a good start out. Like I thought it was going to be something way different in the beginning. It's like this guy he's like smoking he's like an actor but he's going around smoking crack and fucking hookers and taking showers and jeans yeah burning shit that was, I was like i thought maybe there would be some kind of you know go back to that it's like oh, okay all that meant nothing basically and and then uh but yeah no, acting no acting was that, good yeah. acting was good they set out to try do something good but i feel like they threw too many things in it to try to make it good and they tried to do it too different, and they they could have just they could have just done it the way we all were thinking or hoping, and they just nah, they just said fuck you now, we're doing it this way, and so I, I I'm I'm gonna give it an F plus. Ouch. Okay. Well, an interesting thing, everybody kept saying the acting was good. Yeah. Are, are we really sure the acting was good? Yeah, Melissa McCarthy. Melissa played McCarthy like was great. Six she roles, I feel like. Ryan Reynolds, who by the way is one of my favorites. I think he was just Ryan Reynolds. No, I think it was Ryan Reynolds before he found his voice. Yeah, yeah. kind of. No, because yeah, a no, little no, no. bit. First actor, I got Ryan Reynolds vibes. The first iteration, I got Ryan Reynolds vibes. The second reality TV show part, I did not. I got a, I got a different, more vulnerable Ryan Reynolds. You could tell he was different than the actor. And then the third one felt different to me as well. The married husband, like that, felt a little bit more like what you would see Ryan Reynolds at home. So I felt like the first one was Ryan Reynolds on screen as we know him today, like a Van Wilder type Ryan mm-hmm. Reynolds. The second one is his attempt to be sensitive. And I think it does come off and it's a light attempt. He almost came off gay a little bit. I think they even mentioned that. I think he was gay. Um, yeah. yeah. And, but it's not like called to, but it's like enough of a, like a performance where it's just like, it doesn't matter one way or the other. You, you but he is more, he is more sensitive. Like he's a more in tune with, with, like who he is than the first guy, uh, less destructive, but maybe more destructive. Like in some ways, it felt like Ryan Reynolds playing gay to me. It's it was hard awful. to see him do something other than what he was in waiting, because we always see him as this quick-witted, like right. humorous guy. And of course, I mean that's what got him Deadpool. It's yeah. like he went from waiting, which came out two years before this, and into this. And I just, uh, I wasn't really feeling it with Ryan Reynolds, even though I just like him. That's what kind of what carried. And then Melissa McCarthy did a great job. Uh, the other chick, Hope, Hope Davis, Davis was good. Yeah, she yeah, but she, she played because she didn't really change that much. She was always kind of a well a bitch in the role. I mean, that's the she the was role. supposed to be. Yeah. But she didn't throughout the. She's the one that didn't change. But Melissa McCarthy in the third act, when she was just Melissa, not Melissa McCarthy, but when she became uh, just the housewife, not to Ryan Reynolds, but then the other. After with the other with husband, the final, again. the fourth, yeah, the very iteration. final, the iteration, fourth one, the fourth one, uh, was that was a amazing acting because that was not her. You you lost her in that even. 
and I like that she looks in the mirror and then asks her daughter, her name, what's yeah. my name? And the daughter says, mommy. And, <laughs> That's then, right. and, and then she turns to him and says, he's not coming back. Like, this is, this is it. And so it's like a fin- finality that's just needed. I loved the idea of, of the nines and being numbered and godlike beings just creating these universes so much. I would totally watch a sequel to this. Was uh, the little girl a nine? No. Oh. Hmm. She knew what was going on the whole time. Yeah, can they make other nines? I mean, can maybe. a nine and seven make another nine? I bet or would you it they just can be make... an eight, a koala, telepathic koala. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's a, we don't we don't get enough. Um, we didn't get enough sequels. To so I them. guess now that's another sequel we got to write. The tens. I don't know. <laughs> well, you wouldn't want to do the tens because that's like, I think too, too omnipotent. I, but I do think that if you Eight, were nine and a half. <laughs> <laughs> How about another one with Melissa McCarthy? Uh, living her life in the post nines like post him leaving and then he comes back like a second uh like a second coming for her sort of like uh where he appears and he wants to create i don't know or maybe the little girl just created it all yeah maybe it is the little girl she is a nine with a twist yeah well anyway it'd be easier to do another movie with the the girl than the two big stars at this point yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. oh wait well It's still one of the Fannings. I think it was Elle Fanning. I think it was one of her earlier roles. Yeah, find somebody else. I, I so. hope he breaks the fourth wall and like goes to this movie, kind of like how he did with Green Lantern and the oh. X-Men Origins. So you're hoping that the next... I hope this Which movie we're not talking about Wolverine, but so, you're hoping... So in Deadpool and Wolverine, he comes out as this guy. <laughs> he does. He shoots the nines in the back of the head. Yeah, he shoots them. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't a, a badly received movie. I bet, I bet you he enjoyed making it. Well, you said 65%, and that was about what we ended up at, pretty much. No, no, it's, you guys made it way worse. I gave it a B-, minus, which means nothing, because it's a D, an F+, plus and a C-. Minus. C-. Minus. So, so it's a D. Yeah, it's a solid D. Yeah. Fuck. All right, well, the nines, good movie. Beef gets Jerky a, was good. Gets a D. Beef, Beef Jerky is great. <laughs> and, of course, the winner of the Beef Jerky episode gets to pick the next movie. <laughs> Whatever. Let me get your pen real quick. I need to write down the grade of this and the next movie. The next movie is going to be Spawn. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Which Spawn? Spawn. The the it's on there. Okay. Oh, John Leguizamo. Yeah. It's directed by um nobody. Um I needed something good. I don't think I could punish you guys with something worse than this. Yeah. He's, in my opinion. Possible. In my opinion, not everyone. Next everyone's week, Brennan. Oh, okay. The week after. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You break up me and Mike. All right. Well, hopefully there's a hockey movie on Because Austin. Yeah, <laughs> it's always oh a hockey God, movie. Yeah, that's his, that's his claim to fame. It's Boston yeah, I'll, I'll and hockey. I'll change it up on you guys. Uh, the next movie is fucking oh, Boston Spawn. gives you a lot of choices. That is true. There you go. It's a good toss and catch. Uh, so the next movie, Spawn. What a hell of a movie! Uh, I love that movie. Unironically, not even for it being bad, but I'm a big fan. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I can't wait to see the fried rice with the little cape on it. So, so is next week going to be our review of uh, the show you haven't finished watching yet? Fallout. We're not reviewing Fallout, are we? No, we're not gonna. We don't. We can't do a whole show. <laughs> no, I'm just saying we're gonna talk about it next week. Are you gonna finish Fallout this week? Do you guys see the peer pressure I'm under? Like the pressure of everyone being like, "You better fucking finish Fallout, or we're gonna ruin Fallout for you." Who does that? By the time we talk about it and air the episode, people will be like, "Fallout, what? Season two is about to come out." <laughs> yeah. yeah, they could totally just call each other and talk about it, but they want to wait till I'm there at work to have full blown conversations about the show. Yeah, I'll fucking watch it, okay? <laughs> I will watch episode two onwards. I'll watch it once you guys fuck off. I'll go watch it. I already got to rewatch season one to even remember what you're talking about now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that show. That was a great show. It was great. Okay, Fallout well, is fantastic. We can at least talk about two. the first episode because you watched the first episode, right? All right, spoilers for the first episode of Fallout. 
the aesthetic is fucking amazing. That fuck inside the <coughs> the vault, so cool. Mm-hmm. I haven't even really played the games. Dario talked me into getting New Vegas on my uh, Game Pass, so I'm gonna start there. Oh, it's also on Prime to own. Oh, Prime Gaming, mm-hmm. they're giving them out right now. Yeah. Okay, I'll probably just pick it up. But uh, it's also on Game Pass. But whatever. But yeah, I'm gonna try New Vegas. I hear that one's a good one. And, New Vegas and is you great. can and you can go to Oatman. Yep, which is crazy. So that is crazy. I yeah, that. you can go to Oatman, which is a, a nearby town that you can visit when you uh, come out here. So, uh, okay, looks amazing. Acting is pretty good so far. Uh, I like the Brotherhood of Steel. Yeah, like that's pretty cool. I like that he's a squire. Like it's that was a cool twist. Do you think he? Well, you guys know. You guys finished it. Never mind. I was about to say, do you think he's the one that did it to her foot? But. You know, uh, I don't want to know. <laughs> so, yeah, I like it. I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm con- excited to continue. I hope they introduce more characters. Oh, and then of course, Walter Goggins' character, amazing. Yeah, the cool. I was wondering how they were going to do that. I even think I remember asking you guys at one point. I was like, well, they kind of wasted Walter Goggins by having him in the very beginning just react to a nuke. Oh well, 200 years have gone by. No more Walter Goggins. They used him in the first part of the first episode. And now he's a mutant who's alive forever, it seems like. So you could yes. just, if you're mutated by this radiation, you live forever? Well, is that, mutated, did they, really keep, is that scene where they drag him out in, in episode one? Yeah, just and, keep and they cut off, okay. and, they, and then he kills yeah. them all. Yeah, yeah, he's, okay. Now he's in, free. I just make sure that wasn't in episode two. So. Yeah, now yeah, he's free. So, yeah, he's already, he's basically a zombie, so. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, so far, I give it, um, you know, five fallout shelters out of five. Yeah. I guess. A solid show. Keep I watching. rate it one Clearman's cheese. Oh yeah, <laughs> solid ten out of ten experience. All right. Well, this episode's been brought to you by Gem Gems Meat Gem Meats Gem Meats in Placentia. And also, if you're in Placentia and you go to Irvine, Wait a minute. Placentia. Yeah, this one I got in in uh, Placentia, the Clearman's. It's at the Stater Brothers. It's oh. pretty much at all of them. Where's Gem Meats? It's in Placentia. It's on Yorba Linda Boulevard. So just the closest, the closest. Stop at Jim Meats, get some beef jerky, whatever kind you like, and then go down to the nearest state, Stater Brothers and get yourself some Clearman's cheese. And then if you want to go the next step and get the third thing, you go to Patty's and you get yourself a Patty's burrito and you get yourself a tub of the hot Patty's hot sauce. But then while you're down there in Placentia, you go a little bit further to Irvine and right off the... That's not a little bit further. Yeah, it is. It's mm-hmm. like 20, 15 minutes with no traffic. So there's minutes. never no traffic. Whatever. Oh, yeah, so maybe COVID hour traffic. and a half. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Zero. But if you if you go down there, there's a. It doesn't even matter. I can't even describe it. I don't know what the place is called, and I don't know what the bread is called. But there's these two dudes that just make this bread in this world market in Irvine, and there's a line that just wraps around the fucking whole store because people just stand in line to get it, and they just keep pumping it out all day. And there's a maximum amount you can buy in line at any given time. Is it like the Mexican sweet bread? No, it's like a flat, almost like a non type bread, but or, or like um like a pe like uh, what the, for hummus, like okay. one of those type of breads. But there's something about it that's different. It's hard to explain. It almost feels like a like a Jewish recipe. Like there's something about the bread that makes it like flat, but then it's not crunchy. It's soft, but it's the best. Honestly, the best fucking type of that bread I've ever had in my life, and it's worth the trip. If you can find this random place, where is Placentia at compared to like say? Well, you it's said like you went to because you went to Santa Monica, right? From yeah. there to Santa Monica, it's near. You're it's between Anaheim and Yorba Linda, basically. Okay. And uterus. I knew someone was going to go there. I didn't think it would be Andy, because <laughs> I know we just blew Mike's fucking mind when we said there's a place called Placentia. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute. My wife and I ate that that after our son was born. No, we did not. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's Brennan. That's they, they like, Brennan's yeah, the hippie here. Yeah. No, God no. Did you? We had C-section. No. Oh yeah, because I would. I mean, yeah, we he got it to go. Dude. We yeah. we. Yeah. So let's see your scar. I had the splash. I was in the splash zone. I'm scarred for life. I saw the I saw the stuff on the table, man. The splash. Were zone. you in the yeah. actual yeah. splash zone? Yeah, I was the for my second child. I was tempted to look over the curtain because she's on the table like this, and there's a curtain here basically where they're cutting her and you could see them moving her 
as they're cutting her. Oh. And I was like, I kind of tempted to look. And next thing you know, some liquid flew over. And one of the doctors oh. like, uh, could someone wipe my face? And I was like, yeah, I'm not looking over. And Is then, of course. Oh. Was your I, wife awake? Yeah. Yeah, but super sedated. Oh. I just can't imagine. Super sedated. sedated. That they're awake. Just see the I mean, doctors like, they're awake. Go on. Like, yeah. act, Andy, act like you're giving yeah. birth. You're the chicken. <gasps> Just come on. Ah, breathe. Just fucking breathe. hate you so just, much, Austin. Just breathe. You said you loved me. Just breathe. And then in the background, you hear Brent. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. I just, my wife saw, saw my face. She said I was white as a ghost. And uh, like afterward, like, cause that the whole thing was just, it was, it, it was crazy. Uh, the second one was super traumatic. We tried to do a natural birth. Didn't work. She said, cut the fucking baby out of me. Like she's screaming it. So. C-section is what we went. Next one's going to be orgasmic water birth, right? <laughs> yeah, no, after that, all C-section. The last one was the easiest, though. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so when I held my son for the first time, I went to go back to my wife, and, of course, then I could see on the other side of the curtain all of her innards on a table next to her, and that was uh, definitely something I will never unsee. God, I can never, <laughs> I can never unhear that. You're welcome. Don't God, ever tell your, don't ever tell the kids that you know them. Their whichever kid was the most traumatic birth. Don't tell them that. <laughs> they wear it. They wear it like a badge of honor. Like <laughs> yeah. My mom told me I was the most painful birth. Yeah. So whenever she said like stubs her toes, oh fuck that hurt. I'm like worse than my birth. <laughs> they just <laughs> sends her back to it. Yeah, I know. That was our middle child. That's fucked up. He was he was the most traumatic for sure. Yeah. No, that's um. Not how I anticipated this episode to end. <laughs> well, you're welcome. <laughs> I don't know what brought it up. Oh, yeah, you started, said I ate the placenta. Yeah. placenta. Started with jerky, <laughs> ended up with... Uh... No, I'm not that kind of hippie. You never ate a placenta? Well, congratulations, you just had some. Yay! <laughs> some jerked placenta. Well, this is... Uh... This has been Fried Rice Podcast. Thanks with for sticking us. around for that great humor. It's evolving. Yes. Next week, the episode of Spawn, uh, the, the movie we're going to watch, Spawn. Uh, it's on Tubi. Go check it out. With us, as always, is Michael. Uh, I, the Clearman's was a clear attempt to kill him. It did not work. I didn't cook it long enough. That's on me. Maybe next time. I hope you die, you old bitch. Larson. Chelios, motherfucker. I knew it. <laughs> everybody with us as always is brennan shipley up to mother bucket boston i like mike's nickname chelios okay don't now how many people are gonna fire this episode austin oh and with us as always is austin um he drove from another state to be here and he's gonna have a whole extra four hour drive to get home uh, three hours. I'm so sorry. I added an extra hour. Um, I drove four hours to be here. That's what it was. You drove four hours to be here. You're driving three hours to be back. And there's no way that you're going to back up this whole Chelios thing because as my producer and friend, you know, you know that I need to have someone backing me up and that it's a bad idea. Farrell. And then cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of your night.